Hi all, for our notable game today, let's turn our attention to the great Gary Gasparov, arguably one of the greatest players of all time. In his games with Britain's Nigel Short, one of the greatest ever UK grandmasters, he seemed to be playing his best game. He always brought his best game. Let's have a look at the encounter in Brussels, 1987. In 1987, Kasparov and Lebojevic uh, shared first place, place actually at the 1987 Swift Super Tournament in Brussels. The tournament was sponsored and funded by the Belgian company Swift, which is a society for worldwide interbank financial tele telecommunications. The event took place from April 10th to April 24th and was considered cat a FIDE category 14. Average ELO was an impressive 2580. Interestingly, three world champions were pre present, not just Kasparov, but also Mikhail Tao and Anatoly Karpov. Tao was originally in attending the tournament as a journalist, but when Hubner fell ill during the first round game, Tao stepped in and replaced him for the entire tournament. So a fascinating tournament lineup. Nigel Short playing black, d4 from Kasparov, and we have knight f6, c4, and our logical choice, e6, Nimza Indian, knight f3, Queen's Indian territory. Actually, we now go into the Bogo engine with bishop b4 check, knight bd2. This is actually the second most popular choice here. d5, e3, Nigel castles. We have a3 kicking the bishop back. It goes back to e7. Bishop d3. And now black finchettos with b6 trying to solve the problem bishop. Castles, bishop b7. And now a move which seems designed to discourage c5, b4, trying to discourage perhaps c5. But c5 is usually played anyway here. The only slight mild concern you might have in this position after b takes, b takes, is actually white has some pressure along the b file, rook b1. Is this bishop a problem bishop to be taken care of? Well, it seems theoretically in this position, a lot of players, there's 17 in live book, play bishop a6 here, which seems logical in its own right. Uh, to put some pressure on this diagonal. So bishop a6 seems to be the most common uh, approach. But in this game, we see queen c7. Now, there might be to you a slight insecurity about this bishop here and the queen just protecting it. What can Kasparov do to make that insecurity a real problem for black? So this is, I think, why the game might be considered quite interesting. White plays c takes d5 here. And... Nigel Short plays e takes d5. We have d takes c5, isolating black's queen's pawn here at the very least. So positionally, it seems a very interesting position for white. This bishop can go to this diagonal, and at minimum, he can try and set up a blockade on d4. Black doesn't routinely capture, recapture with the bishop here. Uh, if he did, then this is seemingly a very pleasant position. Queen b3 gaining a tempo. And if bishop b6, again, this bishop might be a source of embarrassment after a4, threatening a5. After bishop a6 getting out of the way, bishop a3, this diagonal, this is a pleasant enough position for white. White well, has, it seems, a nice advantage positionally. But in the game, we have a more sophisticated, delayed recapture of this pawn, knight bd7. I'm trying to take with the knight, which will put pressure on d3 and e4. Seems very logical. Kasparov plays bishop b2. And now knight takes c5. First thing, the, the, the bishop, the knight is pinned to the queen. And it seems in some variations, well, bishop takes f6 might be on the cards, potentially, with bishop takes h7 next. Nigel Short reacts with rook ac8. Now here, bishop takes f6 might not be too good. It wasn't played, actually. If bishop takes f6, then knight takes d3. And here, if queen takes, then rook takes, protects the bishop on e7, and black would be okay in this position. Now, instead, there's a move which is a kind of wake-up call to some of black's potentially loose pieces here. Okay, can you see what white's first move is? in this position, which starts to put uncomfortable pressure on black's position. If I give you five seconds, what would you play here with white? Oh, 
okay a nice forcing move bishop f5 and useful it's not compromising it's not giving black anything it's giving back a, a pin he doesn't want really there's already one pin which he particularly you know maybe is not enamored by because white can build up pressure behind that pin but now black doesn't want to move the rook away he actually plays knight e6 and there's a potential nasty pin here as well now what does white play in this position which actually embarrasses a bit this bishop so a little tactical combination now from Gary Kasparov not too spectacular maybe you can find it if you pause the video and come back I'll give you five seconds to do that now white to play okay a forcing move Queen takes c7 Rook takes c7 not to be done lightly because that might be useful to black potentially that c file to double rooks but here Bishop e5 is a double attack on c7 and b7 black all of a sudden is facing extremely uncomfortable pressure look at these two bishops across these diagonals rook d7 going into a nasty pin here which Kasparov tries to capitalize on with knight d4 so threatening knight takes e6 and then carnage after bishop takes e6 check black now plays a, a very clever response it seems on the surface knight takes d4 wasn't that pinned well if bishop takes d7 black has knight e2 check and then can take here as an example things are getting a bit complicated after, after taking here rook takes knight takes rook takes well black is actually not doing very well there hold on a sec after knight d4 knight takes d4 can black do better let's just check this 100 <laughs> percent okay it seems actually bishop takes d7 is also perfectly playable here because this bishop is a problem in this position what was played is also very very strong both of these moves are about as strong as each other either bishop takes d4 or bishop takes d7 yes even this line if check unfortunately this is no good really after rook takes b7 it's running into peace skewer here yeah this this is this is obviously an advantage for white so th this is why uh, Nigel Schwartz in a really really bad position here but uh, Kasparov actually doesn't even take on d7 he just plays this one Bishop takes here and now it's clear actually if the rook returns to c7 then Bishop e5 is extremely annoying and this Bishop really will be hanging the rook can't actually attack a piece or anything nothing can be put in the way this looks actually quite terminal here to win material so black desperately just gave up the exchange Bishop c8 at move 20 that was taken Bishop takes d7 was played and now skewer lands rook b7 there's a skewer here all white needs to do is play bishop takes f6 and it'll be winning d7 black plays rook d8 but he's losing that a pawn now and so this a pawn is ready to roll so the exchange up a fantastic blockading centralized bishop Kasparov has somehow made this game look quite easy knight e8 after rook c1 Nigel Schwartz had enough he actually resigned here so it seems as though basically Kasparov was it seems like more awake he was looking for forcing moves tactical vulnerabilities it was alert to these possibilities nothing too glamorous or sophisticated it seems in this particular game the opening set the scene for some b-file pressure and it seems theoretically the bishop is moved away at an early opportunity with bishop a6 in the opening so that b7 bishop a potential tactical liability the use of the f5 square was interesting dislodging some key defensive tasks and causing a very nasty pin which was basically then winning for white quite early on so quite a short game against Nigel Short 
Okay, I hope you got something from it. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.